Hi, this video is going to be about parameter locks in Bitwig and a couple different ways you can implement them. If you're not familiar with parameter locks, uh, they're commonly known from Electron Gear. They're kind of a staple of Electron sequencers. Um, on, the, on, the electron, on Electron sequencers, the way they work is you can hold down a button for any step and you know twist whatever knobs you want, and it locks in the parameters for that specific step. So basically, it's like per step modulation. Um, so I, I did a video one time about doing it in the grid, but that way was way over complex. And so I'm, I'm doing it a couple different ways now that, that are a lot simpler. Um, and same goes for some of my other grid videos. I've been kind of figuring out easier ways of doing a lot of this stuff. So uh, I need to follow up some of my other videos and make revisions. But anyway, so um, here's a patch right now that's linking eight Paraseq modulators. The Paraseq kind of allows you to do parameter locks. It's basically what it is, but it's only eight steps, and so it's a little bit limited. So uh, I have this patch over here that that allows you to run between one and eight, so you can have either eight steps, 16 steps, 32 or 64. You have a rate knob, and you have a solo per step. So I'll, I'll show you what's going on. I'll let you hear it right now. And I just threw this together right right before filming this uh, this little patch, so I'm just kind of randomly threw some um just randomly did some modulation on some sampler parameters to see if this thing works so uh, i'll let you hear that now and show you what's what's going on <laughs> all right so um so like i was saying you can um, dial in the steps for any one of these. And so I'll show you how, how this works. And then I'll show you another easier way to do it too. But anyway, so um, if you hold solo right here, you can dial in any step. So I can, right now I'm on step one. And oops, I'm on step one. So I can hold down the modulator for step one and just as assign anything till I'm happy with how it sounds. You know, so I could... Okay, so then I can say that's step one, and then I can move over to the next step, dial it in. All right, anyway, you get the point. And then if I turn off solo... Okay, and so, uh, and then the options I have on here, so I have options for rate. And there's an ar ar arpeggiator going for the steps right now. So um, this is just the p parameters on the sampler. The actual gates are coming from an, an arpeggiator. So, and then uh, I have the length. So if I bring it down here, it's just uh, one sequencer. And if I go all the way up here, it'll be 64. Oops, oh, wait, wrong, 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 wrong knob. This one's the length. But I haven't actually dialed in any settings for the last ones, but you can see. Okay. And then, um, so let me bring that down. And then um, you can override the, uh, I just have basically a ramp right now running the whole thing, but you can override it. But anyway, so yeah, this is just kind of like a modification to Paraseq to expand it um, with these extra features and have longer sequences, basically. Because that, that was the one thing that for me was really limiting about Paraseq was how short the sequences are. But anyway, let me show you a couple different methods of um, doing this. So uh, let me just get a sampler. So one method you could do also involves uh, using the steps. So you could um, do it this way with steps, uh, put it on hold, and then get a macro, run the macro into the phase mod in, and then the macro will effectively decide which step is playing. So then you can take a, uh, a classic LFO, Put a triangle, let's say put it on, put no, no trigger on. 
Let me mute this. So if I run this to here, it'll play the sequence, or it should play the sequence. That's right. Oh, this needs to be unipolar, okay. So yeah, that'll play the sequence, you see, really slowly, let me speed it up to a bar. All right, so now you can see that's playing the sequence. Okay, and then if you just simply deactivate that modulator, then you could dial in the settings for that specific step by just turning the knob and then just put it back to zero, turn back on the, the modulator, and that's one way you could do parameter locks. But with this way, because, you know, this steps modulator has one output. So, you know, the way you would do this, you know, if like what I would do is basically duplicate this module for however many parameters you want to uh, modulate. So, like, let's say you have six different parameters or whatever. How many is it? Or five. Then you just have the modulator go to the min min to max values that you want to modulate between and then just dial it in for each step you know and then again you can just uh turn off turn that off and then go through and it'll go through you see all of the different ones at the same time and because this has unlimited amount of steps you can just put it or uh, not unlimited it goes to 64 but you can put it to whatever you want and dial it in that way and so that way is one way for doing parameter locks that works fine. Uh, but then the reason why I liked this one, and well, the cool thing about this too is you can just do it right in here. You don't have to open up the grid. Um, so they both have their advantages. But then with this method I did over here, it's kind of cool because you don't have to actually like have min max values for a certain amount of parameters. You're not really limited to any parameters, you know, because like say you were modulating like 20 different things you're not going to want to have you know it's going to be a lot to have 20 different instances of this steps module so that's why that's the advantage of doing it with Parasec. so um let me show you how you can set this up really quickly in the grid so if we open up a polygrid let's grab uh, where is it? Parasec 8. Turn down the global amount. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, if you don't do that, as it's switching from one to another, it'll get stuck. It'll get hung on the first step. So though that modulation will still be there. So you need to turn off each one as one periodically pl plays after, after, as one periodically plays after the other. And then um, we'll put this on hold. Okay. And is there anything else we need to do? I think that that's it. So we can just duplicate this. So I had, uh, I had eight of them. And if you recall in the patch, I had um, basically an option to decide however many I want. All right. So uh, the first thing that we would that we'll need over here uh is to be able to sequence between each one of these so if we get a value and then um run it into a multiplier and then so we, what we would do is eight if it was if we if we always wanted to play 64 steps but because we have a length knob we need to actually get a um, merge. Let's give it four inputs, put it on nearest. And so I'll put eight down here. Let's get four over here. Two here. One here. And this will run into the input of the multiply so basically we're deciding our knob will get multiplied by what by any of those amounts depending on the length and then uh, let's get another value so we'll call this one length 
And I'll call this one motion. I don't know why I'm calling it motion, just because it's the motion of going through these uh, these things. All right, so this will control that. And now, so we'll get one modulator to control each one of these. So we want eight. All right, and then, um, so the first one will run right into here. And then to what you have to do is shift each one of the other ones. There's pr There might be other ways of doing this, but what I'm doing is I'm just running a bias. So, uh, you know, let me actually just duplicate it first. Okay, so we'll run the output of the multiply into the bias and run the bias into this modulator and the output of that bias into this bias and into there. So you can see the basic pattern. And so this is basically just makes it like shift back to the beginning each time. So, okay. And now what we want to do is have this first one control. Uh, where's the phase mod in on here? I forgot. It's this one. All right. You know, let me label these two so we remember which one we're on. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, shit, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Let's go back here. So for number two. Run number two to two's phase mod. And these aren't labeled either, but here, let me just do that really quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So we just assigned a number two, right? Yeah. Okay. So now number three. And there might be a better way to link all these up. I don't really know. This is just kind of what I figured out. Um, so, you know, I might end up revising this video down the road. Like like I was saying, a bunch of my videos, I ended up finding better ways of doing them later on after, <laughs> after making the videos. So, like, you know, you kind of see my learning process with the whole thing because, you know, I just sort of play around until I figure these things out. But there's you know, usually many ways of doing the same thing. All right, so uh, now, oh, that's, it. so if we put the length up all the way, yeah, you see, it goes through. If you look down over here, it's going through each one of the paraseeks. okay? So if the length is over here, it should go, just go through the top four. If the length's over here, it'll go through the, oh, that's one. If the length's over here, It'll go through two, so it'll so that basically gives us the option of going between eight to sixty four steps, and I mean you can change that too if you if you want less you could also lower the amount of the of this but anyway it gives us eight to sixty four. So the next thing that's important is to turn off. Well, actually we already turned them off, but to turn on each Parasite when it's active. So the reason why, like, why I was saying you turn off each paraseek is that otherwise whatever value was last hit on it, like where it left off, will stay active. And we we don't want them. We want everything turned off except for the step that's playing. So in order to do that, um, what I did was uh, went to logic and just made like a little mini kind of sequencer thing that turns them off. Um, turns them off and on. So if we get uh, a greater than and then a uh, did I use oh why did I use that? Used a, you're equal to oh I see what I did. Okay.
All right, so we have the first one's a greater a greater or equal to, and this one's a lesser or equal to, and then the, the, the rest of these are all the greater thens. So we need eight of them. So let me see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shit. You can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need two more. Seven, eight. All right, and then, um, and okay, and then we'll get, uh, we need a constant. Let's, let's get a zero and a one, and then, um, what we need to do is run this, I'm gonna make this a different color so we can see what we're doing. Run this into the top input of each one of these, which I should have done before I duplicated them, but I didn't think about it, so. Yeah, that would have been quicker, would it be to do one of them and then repeat them all, but just whatever, it takes a minute. And I know this whole thing might seem slightly tedious, but uh, you know, once you have it, you can basically load anything into this grid patch and have parameter locks that are pretty flexible. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is run a zero into the first one, and then uh, we need to get uh, divided by from the one. So divide. So we're gonna divide one by whatever value is coming out of the length. And then that is going to go into, um, let me see, what did I have? So that goes into the bottom. Okay. All right, so the divided by is going to go into, so I'm looking at a picture of how I had it all set up. All right, so that that's going into there, and then it's going to go into a whole bunch of plus modules. And so basically just the whole idea is we're saying that if, if this knob is greater or equal to one divided by whatever one of these values because of the length, then it'll open up uh, the modulator, which will um, turn on one of those. So, um, plus. Okay, it looks like I, that's running into both of those. And then the output from each one of these will run into uh, the top input of here. And then we'll run. So for each one of them, take the output of the plus and then run it into the top input of the next plus and then the output of the divide and run that into the bottom. Oops. Okay, like that. So the, re the w what's going on with this math is one is dividing by whatever number this is. So depending on the length, so either one, two, four, eight, and then it just adds it to itself each time. So we're basically saying, um, so you know, because of that, the math ends up working. That it ends, you know, that we say if it's greater than that value and less than the value underneath. Hopefully that all makes sense. So then we're gonna run. Oh, did I already run the bottoms of these? Oh, no, I didn't run the bottoms of these. So each one of these 
is going to run into, so the bottom one of each of these is going to run into the plus above it. Maybe this is going to be hard to see. Let me move this over a little bit so that we can actually see that. Okay, there we go. So this will be what it looks like. Okay, and then <coughs> the each of these are going to come from the one right over here. Okay, cool. So that's all wired up. All right. So then each of these will run into the end. And I know this part's a little bit tedious, and there might be quicker ways to do it. I just... I don't know. I don't know what they are. Really, none of this would be necessary if the Parasite just had more steps. Okay. So now what we're going to do is each one of these, let's just label them. Each one of these will turn on the corresponding Paraseek. Okay, so one will turn on the first one. All right, two will turn on the second one. Three will turn on the third one. Four will turn on the fourth. And so on. Um, and yeah, I like I like to have sixty four steps, so I think it's at least have the option to go up uh, go up that high is pretty nice if if you're doing, especially if you're working at like a double time, like if you're working at like you know one hundred seventy beats a minute or something like that. It's Okay, so that part is done. So, so let's make sure now these are off, right? That's off until I get, oh wait, the link's up, let me see. Yeah, okay, that works. Yep, it all works. Oh shit. Okay, so let's see what's the next part to do. Um, the next part is let's run a ramp into the whole thing. Um, and first, let's uh, let's just put two macros here. So we'll call this one length. And this one will be, um, what did I say? What's this one? This one, you know what? Actually, let's not, let's not assign this one to the motion. What we're going to do, let's assign this one to a separate value. Let's just call this one step. And then let's assign that one to a, um, value over here that'll go to its a modulator over here because um, we only really want this on when solo's on 
So what we can do is uh, get a selector and then um, let me just get a button over here. Call this one solo and then get a button over here. Solo, assign that to that. Does that work? Okay. And did I assign this to the motion yet? So this one will go to the motion. So that means if solo's on, then Oh, did I sign this yet? Oh, no, I didn't. So that this needs to be assigned to that. Okay. Oh, this should be over here. Okay. Cool. So if solo's off, then yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. And then what we'll do, um, so I just used a, um, a saw going into a reverse as my ramp. And then, um, I had, a. so let's make a knob over here that says rate. I think that that's everything I had on mine in terms of the interface down there. Yeah. So rate, and then let's put a value up here that also says rate. And then um, let's get split and emerge so we can have different timings. And the other thing too, you don't need to do this yourself. I mean, you could just simply throw an LFO in there and assign it to the step and, um, yeah, I mean, th this would be the other way to do this. Th that would be a lot simpler. Maybe I should explain this before we go on. So if you you could also just simply... Oops. Uh-oh, where's classic LFO? You could also just simply assign... Uh, make sure it's on unipolar. Assign an LFO to the step... And then instead of having the solo do this, so basically if you were going to do it that way, you would have the step assigned to the motion. And then in order to solo, you would just simply turn off this, play whatever step it is, and then put it back to zero and turn it on. Um, the one reason why uh, I, I ended up wanting to just do an LFO in the grid instead was for one that if we, is that if you do it that way, then whenever you change your length, if you if you're playing, it's going to speed it up. Like here, I can actually let me just show you a demonstration of that. So, if we put a mac, oops, if we put a macro over here, and we sign it to the motion, so that's like like I was saying, and then we put this over here. Notice that now if I change the length, it's going to go like way, way, way faster. So um, I kind of wanted that not to happen. So that's why I didn't do it this way. Uh, all right. So let's delete that. So now what we're going to do, let's take these, put them both on nearest, put them both on eight. And then we'll just set some different times inside of here. So let's just get some scalars. Oops.
Okay, and so we'll have the top one be 8 over 1. I don't know why my CPU suddenly got high. I don't know if it's because I have this other one open, because this patch was not really giving me any CPU problems earlier. Although it might just be because I'm recording a video. Sometimes it just, my computer is old, too. Um, but yeah, this shouldn't really get your CPU high. So we can delete that. So I'm just creating basically a merge and a split to uh, allow us to go to have different rates for the uh, for the ramp. And of course, if you want something other than a ramp, then you can just bypass it. Um, and you can just assign whatever you want to that motion knob. Okay, so we'll have, did we already assign this rate to the rate? No, so the rate is this, that go that controls these. We can put a, uh, a transport going into here. And then, um, you know, one thing actually I forgot about too, um, I had another setup like this to do this slowing down and speeding up depending on, um, so let's, let's add that also. Four on here is 10. So. Let's do this just to change the rate whenever depending on the length so that it adjusts. Okay? So we'll make this one be one over eight. This one will be one over four. This one will be one over two. This one will go straight in there. So the output of there will come out of there. Uh this gets controlled by the length. And then this will run into a saw, which will go into reverse. Let's run that into a reset. Uh, just to make sure the whole thing snaps back. And then, so this is our ramp. So uh, let's run the ramp into a um, select. And then we'll have solo over here so that that whenever solo is on you see it'll turn it off and we won't have that modulation happening so then run that to the motion okay and then um did i have that set up let me see really quickly i don't know why i'm seeing more modulations on that Oh, I had to select. So yeah, one thing too, I had a select um where is it? I had a select on mine. Just here, I guess over here. That uh was triggered by gate so that it just so that the LFO isn't free running when you're not pressing a gate. So you see now if I press I'm pressing a MIDI keyboard. This is moving, but if I let go, it stops. Doesn't really matter, though. You don't actually need that. That's just so it's not running all over the place when I'm not using it. Did I actually? I think I had it after the thing. Shit. Let me undo that. Let's put it after, because... Uh, I don't know if it actually matters, but so if I hit this, okay, yeah, there, good, yeah, we want it after because we want it to always snap back to the one, and the reason for that is that just so that like when you're sometimes th with the grid when you first hit a note, things can like be a little jumpy, so that I just like to have everything turned off when it's not free running so it doesn't suddenly get like when you hit play get stuck on the last value it was at. 
So now, anyway, all of this should work now. So now, I'm gonna hold. I'm holding down a note now. If we put it on length here, it's playing the whole thing. We, so this that's the fastest rate. If we put it up, you can see it working. And anyway, yeah, this whole patch is done. So now you can basically put whatever you want into the um, into the uh, effects. So here, I'm just going to copy the sampler that I had uh, on this one. All right, so I have this sampler in here. So now none of this stuff is assigned to anything. And I think I had an arpeggiator in there. Yeah, so so let me play this and make sure that this all works. That's loud. Turn that down. Turn it down a little more. All right. So the first thing, if we hold solo, come over here. I'm on the first step. Now let's assign some stuff on here. So let's just start with the select. Okay, whatever. Doesn't need to be much. So now we go to the next step. Go to the next step, sign that. Anyway, so you get the points. Now if we turn off solo, um, Let's, let's lower the rate a little bit. So you see, we, that's now decided what's going on for these for these steps. So, uh, yeah. So that's so that makes this thing pretty flexible for the parameter locks now because basically you can assign whatever you want to each step. You have an option for length, and you can solo each step. Um, so that's pretty much, you know, everything I really want out of a parameter locking device. I mean, obviously I would rather have pr a parameter lock, like a dedicated modulator in Bitwig. And, um, and if the Parasite 8 simply went up, if you had the option to go up to 64 steps, I probably wouldn't even use the grid. I would just simply, um, do, uh, just simply run a macro into the, um, into the phase and then modulate that by an LFO and avoid all this stuff because, uh, you know, it's, it ends up being a lot of unnecessary stuff. But, um, and yeah, if you do know a better way to actually pat, like sequence between each of these Paris gates, then, um, maybe let me know. I know I don't, I don't actually really respond that often on the YouTube stuff. I'm going to get better about that, but I've been, I've been working on a lot of my own music and just, you know, I, I get on YouTube every now and then and upload these videos, but I'm not really regularly, regularly on it right now. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.